What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about the week 11 schedule and what that means is we're gonna be looking at the teams with the best and worst schedules and also the streamers to help you maximize your games. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. Before we get into the schedule, I just wanna talk about a couple of new ads that I didn't touch on in my last must add video. We have Devin Levi of the Buffalo Sabres. He's played extremely well lately after getting called up from the AHL. And it looks like he is challenging to become the number one starter once again on Buffalo. So take a look at Devin Levi if he is somehow available on your waiver wire. And we got Carolina Hurricanes goaltender P. Order go check off. We just learned today that Andy Ranta was put on waivers. So unless the Carolina Hurricanes trade for a goalie, Kochekov will be the number one starter on Carolina. I also wanted to say that we don't know the severity of Freddie Anderson's injury. We don't know how long he is going to be out for. So there is a chance that Kochekov is the number one starter for even the rest of the season. He has a pretty low roster percentage on Yahoo, so please take a look at him if you need a goalie. Next, we got another goalie, and that man is Scott Wedgwood of the Dallas Stars. We just learned today that Jake Ottinger will not travel with the team and is going under further tests to see how severe his injury is. He went down in last night's game or two nights ago, if you guys are watching this on Sunday. And uh, we don't know how bad it is. If it's pretty bad, then Scott Wedgwood will be the number one starter on a playoff team. So it's definitely worth taking a look at Wedgwood if you need a goalie. Finally, we have Kent Johnson of the Columbus Blue Jackets. He just put up three points against Toronto the other night. And he's played really well considering his poor deployment. I think he has nine points in 15 games despite only averaging 12 minutes a game. So very impressive stuff. With Boone Jenner out long term, I think long term, I should say six weeks, Johnson will see improved deployment. If he can get 15 plus minutes, then you could actually see a potential breakout here because his production has been really solid despite a lack of ice time. So keep an eye out for Ken Johnson. You don't have to add him immediately, but there is a lot of potential here, so we'll see how it plays out. What I will say about Ken Johnson is that when everybody's healthy, it's very unlikely he is going to be on the first line power play. And also when everybody's healthy, I'm not sure how good his ice time is going to be. So don't have huge expectations for Ken Johnson, but in the short term, while Boone Jenner is out, he will see improved deployment. Lastly, before we get into the schedule, I just wanna give a shout out to my Twitter slash X account. It's at Fired Up Fantasy. I post a lot on there and a lot of good content. It's more up to date than this channel just because the way the platform works, I don't have to edit and record and, and do all that stuff. So make sure you follow that. A lot of good stuff on there. A lot of stuff that I don't talk about in my video. So yeah, check it out. Moving on, let's talk about the teams with the most games and off nights this week. We have five teams on this list. And what I wanted to highlight is that there are only two teams this week that play four games. Everybody else plays three. So there is not, you know, an abundance of teams that have really good schedules and there's no teams that have terrible schedules. It's definitely a little bit easier to add players on the waiver wire because we can narrow it down. So yeah, let me read off these teams and we'll get into the streamers in a little bit. We have the Detroit Red Wings. They play four games and have three off nights. So not only are they one of two teams that play four times this week, they also have the most off nights this week as well. So Red Wings players, very good for maximizing your games. Then we have the Winnipeg Jets. They don't play four games, they play three, but all of them are off nights as well. So the Red Wings and the Jets are the only teams that have three off nights this week. Then we have a tier break, the Montreal Canadiens and the Seattle Kraken both having three games and two off nights this week. It's not the best schedule in the world, but we do know that this week, that Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday are very heavy nights. So having players on these teams could be beneficial. Finally, we have the Minnesota Wild. They are only one of two teams that play four times this week. So pretty good for maximizing your games. They don't have the best opponent goals against average, and they only have one off night. So those are the only downsides to their schedule this week. If you have open roster spots on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, then adding players from the Minnesota Wild could be very beneficial. All right, moving on, we have the teams with the least amount of games this week. And this is really good news, guys. We have no teams that play less than three games. So every team this week plays three games at least. Very good. You don't have to worry about having a bunch of players on a team that plays twice. So yeah, that's uh, good news for everybody involved. Moving on, we have the teams with the easiest opponent record this week. We have the Los Angeles Kings, the Colorado Avalanche, the Montreal Canadiens, the Arizona Coyotes, and the Anaheim Ducks. If you have a lot of players on these teams, they probably should do pretty well this week, especially the goalies. So that is something worth taking a look at if you're looking to add players and also just knowing how your team is going to perform for this week. Moving on, we have the teams with the hardest opponent record this week. We have the Nashville Predators, the Edmonton Oilers, the San Jose Sharks, the Carolina Hurricanes, and the Minnesota Wild. If you have a lot of players on these teams, it might not be the worst thing in the world, 
but for the goalies on these teams, they could struggle. So something worth considering if you were looking to add goalies for the entire week and just understanding how your goalies are going to perform this week as well. Moving on, we have the teams with the highest opponent goals against average. These teams are playing teams that let in a lot of goals. So in general, the players on these teams should do pretty good this week. We have the Los Angeles Kings, the Arizona Coyotes, the Vancouver Canucks, the New York Rangers, and the Washington Capitals. Then we have the teams with the lowest opponent goals against average. What this means is that these teams are playing teams that generally do not let in a lot of goals. So their players could struggle, okay? It's not something you want to put too much stock into because, you know, hockey can be very luck based and things can vary week to week. But generally, they are probably going to underperform. We have the San Jose Sharks, the Carolina Hurricanes, the Minnesota Wild, the Nashville Predators and the Calgary Flames. Moving on, I want to give you guys the streamers to help you maximize your games for this week. Without a doubt, the Detroit Red Wings have the best schedule. They have four games and three off nights. So you definitely want to take a look at the players on the Detroit Red Wings. I've taken a couple of players and I've ranked them according to how I value them in fantasy, but it does depend on your league format. All of them are under 90% rostered. So let's list this off, guys. We have Lucas Raymond. He is playing really well lately. Top line minutes, first line power play. Very good option. Patrick Kane, not the biggest fan of him, as you guys may know, but he's getting top line minutes and on that first line power play. So always a good option. We have Shane Gossespierre. First line power play has the potential to put up a lot of points in any given week. So that's a great option. We have JT Confer, who just returned from the IR. We'll see how he slots into the lineup, but in general, he's been pretty good this year. And we have Joe Valino. He had a really good week because Dylan Larkin was out. Dylan Larkin is still out, but there's a chance he returns next week. So once Larkin returns, Valino might not be that good of an option. Keep that in mind, guys. We also have Michael Rasmussen, who is playing really good lately. I think he has eight points in his last seven games. Very, very solid peripherals as well. So Rasmussen, definitely take a look at him, especially if you're in a category league or a league that values shots, hits, and blocks in a points league. Then we have Robbie Fabry, and he was moved down to the third line. I'm not sure how it's going to change this week. Still a solid player, but he doesn't have the best deployment. So keep that in mind. Then we got some deeper league ads, Andrew Kopp, Daniel Sprawn, and Jake Wallman. I also want to mention some defensemen that put up really good shots, hits, and blocks. We have Ben Chirot and Jeff Petrie. These guys, if you're in a category league, could be really useful this week, so take a look at them as well. Next up, we have the streamers on the Winnipeg Jets. This could be a really good option as well because you can pick them up on Sunday or Monday and then drop them Saturday. Three games, three off nights, great options. We have Nikolai Ehlers, who is not only a streamer, but definitely a long-term hold at this point. Kyle Connor is going to miss two months, and that has bumped Ehlers up to the first line power play. He's very good at hockey and offense and, you know, putting up points, but the deployment has not been there. So now that it's there, he should be pretty solid. I don't know what's going to happen when Kyle Connor comes back. There's a chance he just gets bumped down to the second unit once again. But for the next two months, very, very solid. Then we got Gabriel Velarde, first line, first line power play. This guy has fantastic deployment. He was great last year on the Canes. And yeah, you guys have heard me talk about Velarde quite a bit, so I'm not going to waste your time. Great stream this week. Then we got Cole Perfetti. He doesn't have the best ice time, but it is improving with Kyle Connor out. And also he's on the first line power play as well. So great option, lower roster percentage. So he could be available in a lot of your leagues. Take a look at Cole Perfetti. The rest of these players, it's definitely a tear break after this. They're more deeper league ads, but you could take a look at them depending on your league size. We have Nino Niederreiter, Alex Iafalo, Adam Lowry, Mason Appleton, and Vladislav Namestikov. Finally, we have some Minnesota Wild players. They don't have the best opponent goals against average, but they are only one of two teams that play four times this week, so they could be a very good option for maximizing your games. What I do want to say about the Minnesota Wild players is that they only have one off night this week, so if you are going to drop a guy and add a Wild player instead, you probably should have some open roster spots on those heavy nights. That is how you truly maximize your games, okay? Anyways, guys, these are all under 90% rostered, so if they are available, take a look at them. We have Matt Boldy, Matt Zuccarello, Jared Spurgeon, Marco Rossi, Marcus Johansson, Ryan Hartman, and Brock Faber. Finally, we have some other good streamers. These are players on the Montreal Canadiens and the Seattle Kraken. They both have three games and two off nights this week, so... If you have a lot of heavy nights like Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday where you can't fit players into your lineup, these players could be good options. 
We have Cole Caulfield of the Montreal Canadiens, who I think is due for a big bounce back. He could be in for a big week, so please take a look at him if he's available. We have Oliver Bjorkstrand. He's been playing really good lately. Solid deployment. Jared McCann, always a solid option. Nick Suzuki, first line, first line power play. Mike Matheson, first line power play, lots of minutes. Super underrated. Then we have some more players. We have Eli Tolvanen, peripheral beast, putting up a lot of points this year. Jordan Eberle, who I think is a buy low. His shooting percentage is pretty low. I do expect a bounce back soon. Then we have Sean Monaghan getting good deployment on the first line power play. Matty Beniers, not the biggest fan of him, but I do expect him to bounce back. There's no way his production is sustainable. And then lastly, we got Yanni Gord. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I will catch you in the next one.